in a whole sequence of uh, books. Okay. That one book, if I may, that uh, we've discussed in previous conversations, Harry, that does outline the differences between socialism, that is, the lower phase of communism, and communism, as Marxists define it uh, to the fullest extent, is in a book called uh, The Gotha Program, written by Marx and Engels. I be, the critique of the right, Gotha the program. Critique of the Gotha, the Gotha program. program during Marx's time was something Karl Marx denounced mm -hmm. uh, as utopian. Mm -hmm. Now, so. uh, communism we just mentioned is sort of the ideal that socialism is is striving toward. Um, so when someone uh, in the past labeled, for example, uh, the USSR labeled the USSR as a communist party in a way that was uh, a misnomer because communism is, is an ideal. So it, the USSR was a socialist country mm -hmm. and it was maybe working towards communism but never actually mm -hmm. reached communism. Is that correct? I would say that's correct. Um, you know, socialist countries are generally um, commonly called communist in general. It's a very common term. Um, they were socialist countries. Uh, they were countries where the working class held political power. You mentioned the Soviet Union. Um, the Soviet Union as a socialist country uh, had planned production. Right? Um, you didn't have the Kmart, the Walmart, the, the huge monopoly corporations that that directed that country much as we do here. Mm. Um, these were socialist countries led by communist parties um, which produced societies which were free of unemployment, free of economic crises. There was no homeless people in the Soviet Union except for short periods during the wars, World War I and World War II. So, yeah. Just generally speaking, these countries are generally called communist. Um, I have no problem with it, even though we communists, as we understand communism to be, is the higher you know, stage of a class-less society, as Comrade Harry laid out, um, after socialism. Okay. Um, is that a good answer, Harry? Yes, very good. <laughs> Uh, it sounds to me like uh, in the past the socialist or communist countries uh, have had planned economies um, and really when you uh, are talking about socialism or communism what you're really talking about is a different economic system than what most of the viewers out there are familiar with probably yes. all the viewers out there are familiar with which is capitalism yes. mm -hmm. um, uh, and communism or socialism um, sort of uh, is a philosophy, uh, an economic philosophy that came from a capitalist uh, culture um, and a, it was a reaction to capitalism. Right. Um, so uh, I, I wanted to uh, also try to tie in um, the U.S. media's role in sort of um, defining what communism is because certainly uh, in the United States <laughs> in the United States it's been uh, you know pretty much uh, ostracized you know like if, if you use the term for, for some person if you say they're socialist or if you say they're communist it's like automatically you know no don't don't go there don't listen to that person um, and a lot of that since the U.S. never has been communist, has never been socialist, is just from things that we learn through the media. Um, and I'm just wondering <clears throat> if communism and socialism basically got a bad rap um, throughout the last half century or, or more. Well, what are the bourgeoisie, what are the capitalists, what are the monopoly controllers of this country going to say? Uh, you know, American people, communism's a society where, uh, <laughs> where you have power, where your class has the political reins, where you won't be exploited by a boss, where you'll get to do things like take vacations free of charge. 
uh, where you'll get all these benefits of the communist countries, what are they going to say? Socialism, communism is a system that provides universal health care, right? Uh, free higher education and has whole, no homelessness? No, they're not going to tell you that. They're going to say, these are demonic systems. Well, they are demonic to the capitalists because the capitalists, the most reactionary force, in my view, that's ever existed throughout history, the ones that in the past century have led wars, have perpetuated imperialism, slavery, degradation of women, and have fought against every progressive gain, are not going to tell you the truth about almost anything. Look what they're saying about Iraq. Look at the class of people that own the media, that own political power, and look what they say about Iraq, you know. They say, oh, uh, you know, they said originally, uh, you know, Iraq has uh, weapons of mass destruction. This is the kind of propaganda the imperialist media and the imperialists, the class of capitalists, um, told us about Iraq. Now we find out later it's a lie. Hmm? But they're putting out new lies to cover that up, to justify imperialism, to justify the subjugation of the Iraqi people. The capitalist class is never going to tell you a neutral, fact-based statement about anything which threatens its class interests. Look at what they say about workers when they go on strike. Oh, the greedy unionists, you know, they're just trying to take services away from you, the public. It's a filthy bourgeois lie to protect their profits. They lie about the unions, just like they lie about the African-American people. When's the last time you saw a black person on TV? I'll tell you, during an episode of Cops, they were the robbers, they were the thieves, they were the people the officers had to protect the public from. When's the last time they told you women's equality was to be valued? Hmm? Look at how women are portrayed in this society. Look at how the workers are portrayed. Look at how we are portrayed. Now, the very same class of parasites and exploiters are not going to give you an honest, objective opinion about socialism. Of course, they're going to tell you it's bad. And to be quite frank, it is bad for their class, for that 5% that owns the majority of the wealth in this country, the 5% that more and more drives things to the right, to the conservative extreme right that leads to wars and imperialism and racism and these anti-human measures that infringe upon peace, democracy, and justice. No, they aren't going to say anything positive about socialism. I absolutely promise you. You see George Bush on TV uh, saying socialism's a, a, a great system and the American public, you should read Karl Marx and read Vladimir Ilyich Lenin. If George Bush does that, I make a promise to every one of your viewers that I'll, I'll give them a dollar apiece. I, I don't know if that's the answer you want. <laughs> uh, is there anything else you would like to add? To well, I just think that uh, what Michael is saying uh, with passion is that uh, we live in a society which is dominated by monopoly capitalists, which means that massive corporations determine the destiny of this country. If they determine the destiny of this country, they determine the ideological orientation of it. Take, for instance, uh, in the last 30 years, there's been more and more of a concentration of uh, the media in the hands of multinational corporations. And I think uh, today there are about seven multinational corpor corporations that control most of the television most of the newspapers, most of the radio mm. in this country, and that is a, that's a bad trend. Certain things which have been in the interest of the working class does reflect a class of view. Take, for instance, there's not one monopoly television channel, radio channel, or paper that questions the whole basis of globalization. What do you mean by globalization? Uh, globalization, uh, in, the, in the context, in the Marxist context, what we call is imperialism. But in the American context, what we are talking about 
is an export of 